I've started diving into Nix OS and I genuinely can't stop. I get when it comes to Nix OS that plenty of people out there are quite annoying with Nix OS. Like if you've hung around just on the internet, a lot of people, their only argument towards Nix OS is simply that the people that use it are very annoying and very excited about Nix OS. As someone who's been using it, I'll explain why people get kind of excited about it. Also, before we dive in, I do want to say thank you for watching. If you haven't already, hit that like button, consider subscribing. Also, these fantastic people on the screen right now support me over on Patreon financially, which means a lot and means I have, you know, the time available to do this and also money to do cool things like merch, which you'll find that down in the description as well. So let's go ahead and jump on in. If I switch over to my desktop here, you'll see we have NixOS here. I guess I should prove that it is in fact NixOS. So let me just run a oop, NeoFetch. And so you can see I am in fact running NixOS. I am running the stable 23.11 release and we've got, you know, Hyperland running, nothing too special. Let me go over here and let's talk about kind of the cool thing I figured out you can do. There is quite quite a few cool things you can do with NixOS when it comes to your boot. NixOS to boot only needs slash boot and slash Nix folders. So you can hear this, this article is actually, I'll link it down below, but this is a very popular NixOS article. Uh, talks about, you know, running NixOS uh, with a small persistent, you know, folder inside of your Nix folder that builds out into your system. Uh, in this one, they're talking about using Z, uh, ZFS and pools. Uh, here in this one, it's just running tempfs uh, for your root partition. So there's a lot of cool things with NixOS you can mess around with and do that is neat. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say this is a thing that you can do that means you need to be using NixOS. No, it's just another cool thing that you can do with NixOS. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what NixOS is at all, it is a declarative distro or Linux distro, I guess would be the best way of putting it. You define your system in a few configuration files, uh, two by default, and those will be placed inside of your Etsy NixOS directory when you install it. When you go to install NixOS and you go to their downloads page, you will actually see, uh, let me go back over here and we'll load up their downloads page. Why not? Uh, if you go to NixOS, you'll see a download page. If you go here, they've got Nix at the top, the package manager, but you're obviously interested in the Linux distribution. They've got some graphical images, GNOME and KDE, as well as a um, minimal ISO. I do not recommend using the minimal ISO at all until you've used NixOS for quite a bit. I still haven't even used the minimal ISO just because there's really no reason to. The GNOME is, the one they recommend, but if for whatever reason you hate GNOME and you want to go Plasma, they do have that available. Now, when you download these ISO images, you are not in necessarily installing NixOS with that graphical, you know, desktop environment included. You actually choose what you want installed on your system during the install. So you'll choose whether or not you want GNOME, whether or not you want whatever. You'll, you'll choose. They got plenty of desktops in there by default. I highly doubt you'll find the one that you're looking for lacking there. You'll, you'll have a choice. There's also a choice of no desktop environment if you want to go more minimal. So there's really no reason to choose the actual minimal ISO. You get yourself a beautiful, nice live, live ISO and install it the same way you would anything else. Uh, let's go over here. So once you actually install it, this home.nix file will not be there. That's something I've added um, because I use home manager and that home.nix file there is a configuration file for home manager, which is a method of declaratively 
setting up your home directory the same way that the configuration.nix file sets up your Nix OS config. So the two files that you actually start with are hardware configuration and just configuration. The hardware configuration file, you will most likely never really need to touch. If I, uh, V is an alias I have for um, them and SV is pseudo vim. So I'll go into uh, the ETC or Etsy directory. I like to call it Etsy, but I know some, like some people's really get their Jimmy's rustled when I say Etsy. Who cares? Uh, let's go into your hardware configuration file. And if you go in here, you'll see what's actually going on is you're setting up your kernel modules. Um, and like me, I have some extra stuff going on in here uh, because I use V4L2 loopback. So I can do uh, a virtual camera in OBS and then see exactly what you guys are seeing. You know, when I switch here in OBS, do all that kind of stuff. I have a virtual camera that is loaded up with V4L2 loopback. And so I'm, I'm loading the kernel module on this line and I'm telling it, Hey, that, that kernel module is provided by this kernel package here. So nothing really too fancy going on. The file systems, it's pretty straightforward. I'm setting up a root and a boot. That's it. Uh, swap devices don't have any you get it you pretty much really won't ever need to come in here you you really don't need to uh, but normally this is generated at boot and i think for most people if we're being honest something similar to what i'm doing here with a v4 l2 loopback is pretty much the only thing that you'll ever have to do if you have to do anything inside of that file ever anyway and then your configuration file here you can see i'm importing my dot home dot nix file so i'm including home manager and then you know i'm setting up hey i'm using system d boot enable that there um, setting up my host name network manager time zone and again most of this is actually generated after the install anyway like you don't most of this you don't need to set up anyway uh you might well i don't believe it sets your it gives you a default like host name so you'll probably want to change that and then you set up your user, which again, most of this will be set up. I just added a few extra groups for my user. Um, for me to install, like enable Hyperland and get pull in all of the dependencies for it, uh, there's a simple programs.hyperland option. And inside of it, there's the enable. So I'm just enabling it, setting it to true. That's it. That is past my actual configuration files for Hyper or for Hyperland. That's it. That will get me a working hyperland that I can configure, get set up, do all of that. Then down here in my system packages, I'm doing some fancier stuff. I'm importing some files that I manage with Home Manager and importing them uh, with those scripts in here. And they'll be available as system packages, uh, system binaries. So that's pretty cool that you can do that. It's very simple too. I'm, you know, it might look like I'm doing a lot of fancy code here, but it, it's really not. I'm, I'm importing the file and telling it to inherit from packages because if I was to go, ooh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. I'm inside of the Etsy directory. I can't do that. Uh, if I go inside of the Etsy scripts directory, and which I'll show you how all this stuff gets created here in a second. Uh, scripts, and then let's do like my emo picker. You can see in here, I've got to change up the scripts a little bit and tell them to pull from packages.tofi slash bin tofi. And that is because if I do a where is tofi, I'm going to get it's inside of the Nix store and then slash bin slash tofi. So that packages.tofi tells it, hey, pull from here and then run it. So it might seem complicated, but I swear it's not. And then I've got all my other system packages in here to install. I'm telling it, Hey, I want to install nerd fonts, but I want to override it. Just pull in the JetBrains mono because the nerd packages package is massive. So I don't want to pull in the whole thing. Uh, then, you know, I'm enabling setting up steam, OpenGL, uh, Nix. I want it to automatically, uh, 
clean up and auto optimize the store. Also with the garbage collection, uh, there's, you can set up automatic garbage collection, which is really neat. And so every time I rebuild my system, it's going to go through and delete anything that is older than seven days. And yeah, pretty nice. Uh, and I believe it will also run it weekly. I think so. I'm not too sure. It might automatically run it weekly on top of that. I'm, I can't remember uh, off the top of my head. It's also super early. And I'm, I just woke up and tried to record this. That's also if my voice is really raspy. That's why. Um, so I'm setting a whole bunch of environment variables in here. Um, then I'm setting up SUID wrappers and stuff for like GNU PG, um, all that kind of stuff. And then I'm doing a lot of services. So OpenSH, the FS trim timer for, you know, SSDs. Um, I'm setting up the uh, X server for X Wayland and stuff, I'm making sure lib inputs there, pipe wire and uh, in, I'm making sure pulse audio is not enabled. I want pulse audio enabled through pipe wire, um, enabling sound and RT kit. Um, then I'm also telling it, Hey, auto update pull from the stable Nix OS channel. Um, and also allow unfree packages. And for my custom configuration, we could, well, we'll dive into that in a second, but if you just edit this file and you've got your hardware configuration file and you want to rebuild your system and switch over to the new system with all of those new settings that you just put in there, all you have to do is sudo nixos dash rebuild and you can tap complete switch. And this is what you would run and it will rebuild your system quite simply for now, for my custom configuration, if I go into my Zany OS folder here in LS, though, this is the Git repo I provide. Um, it will be down in the description. Um, you can go and pull it. It's quite a simple uh, repo. Let me remove this no hub out file. It doesn't matter. I was messing around with stuff. So oops, let me clean this up. So you'll see I've got a folder called config files, a folder called NixOS and scripts. Um, all of the extra stuff here is my readme and obviously the picture inside of my readme file and my build script. Now, if I ls my config files, you'll see I've got a wallpaper, my stinger transition, cause I want, I want those to be pulled with the system for OBS um, and for my system wallpaper everywhere. The stinger transition is how I get the nice you know, effect in OBS when I tr uh, change scenes. Uh, I've got a font in here that I like to use in GIMP for my thumbnails all the time. And then, you know, some configuration files and like my emoji file that I need for, you know, um, well, to be able to source for, uh, for this right here. I don't know why I made it like non full screen. I can easily do it there. I just hit the wrong key binding. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so I can take all of these config files and put them where they need to go with this script right here. And this script, I run this instead of that rebuild command, and it will put my configuration files from this repo where they should go and then rebuild the system. So for me, anytime I want to rebuild my system, I come into this Git repo, I make all of my changes and mess around in here. And then I run this script and it removes the configuration file in my Etsy directory, my home file in my uh, configuration directory. It removes config files and scripts folders in the Etsy directory, you know, assuming they exist. And then, uh, then we copy over the new configuration file, the new home file, then we copy over config files and scripts where they need to go and we rebuild the system. So pretty much what you were doing before, but all managed, uh, like all of the copying and deleting and all that good stuff is managed inside of that script. So me managing my system, making changes to my configuration and also sharing it with people is much easier and also guaranteeing that when you replicate my system, you're going to have all the same fonts. Uh, there, there's not going to be any weird screw screwing around with system settings, or you don't have a certain font that I have or blah, blah, blah. No matter what you're fine. And I think that's 
really nice with Nixo. It is extremely nice. And I've had a lot of fun playing around with the system and all that you can do with it. it it's very, very fun. I don't recommend NixOS for everyone. I don't think this is a system for just anyone. It's much more of a tinkerer's playhouse than you might think when you're first getting started. Like I think the the good part of NixOS is if you enjoy tinkering around with your system, fine tuning stuff, and especially sharing it with people, then NixOS is going to be awesome for you. If you just want a stable system that you don't have to touch and you can always clone and rebuild, never have a problem somewhere else. NixOS is also a really good choice, but the setup part is probably going to turn you away because you're not used to declaring stuff the same, like just managing your system is so different than what you're used to on other Linux distros that it's a very good chance it could turn you off. But if you're able to get through that initial setup and get your system that you have wherever else set up on NixOS, I mean, you'll really not have to do it again. So, yeah, like all you might have to do is go in and change the update channel to the new stable release if you want to do that, to unstable if you want to. Like your your system will just keep working. And if it doesn't keep working and you need to, like, let's say your RAM goes bad, your uh, blah, 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 whatever, you got to build a new PC, you're switching over stuff, you want to completely start from scratch and rebuild the system the way it was the first time you installed it. You only need to keep around a few config files. Um, that's it. And even if you're doing something much more like me, I mean, I have reduced down the overall scope of the files that I've got for my system configuration quite a bit. And I really enjoy it. it. I just, I have really enjoyed my time with Nix OS and I'm very much looking forward to what I'm going to do with it past this. I, well, one of the things that I'm really looking forward to doing uh, is messing around and doing some stuff with game development. I am definitely going to be doing some game development stuff. So if that interests you, please definitely let me know. Stick around. I'll throw up the guys supporting me over on Patreon again because these guys are supporting the channel. And, you know, it, if there's anything close to sponsors, it's these boys. So thanks, everybody, for helping out and just supporting and also having such great conversations with me on pretty much everywhere, uh, here on YouTube, over in Discord. So many people have been talking with me about NixOS, talking with me about, you know, just in general, their Linux life lately. And it's been a really nice time to dive into what everybody's checking out and sharing experiences and stuff. So if you're not on the Discord, definitely come join. We have great conversations over there. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.